Hey, hey, what's up everyone? Happy Dude here and thank you for joining me. So today we are going to build the Nautilus from Jules Verne in the Disney movie from the 1950s. Uh, we are going to start with this part right here. Um, I am going to build some lights in it uh, to give it uh, a bit more life. Uh, this is all uh, 3D printed by someone in Germany. I will leave a link in the description below. As you can see, you get a lot of parts. Um, yeah, this is the front. Uh, it seems like we have a little bit of a repair here, but as you can see, the, uh, the quality is just exceptional. Now we are going to start with this middle piece because this is where most of the electronics and lights will go. Now a lot of people uh, 3D print these submarines but I've chosen the guy in Germany because he, print, he prints one that is hollow on the inside. And that's what you need if you uh, want to build some lights in there. And these are the lights that I'm going to use. I've ordered them from uh, Temu in China because, well, they're the cheapest. And it says uh, 3 volts, but I've already tested it on 12 volt and it does work. Uh, there is a little resistor on there, you see? So it should be safe to use 12 volt. And I've also ordered this. This is a motion sensor, so if anyone uh, walks around the Nautilus, all the lights will go on. How cool is that? But first I need to sand the little rough edges that I can find. Uh, the eBay seller from Germany already did most of the work, so it's uh, not too much trouble. Okay, so it seems like we will need to solder a bit. So let's start with the positive. First we warm up the cable and then we put some solder on there. Okay. That's it. Hmm, I love the smell of solder in the morning. And then we put some solder onto the connector of the battery. And then we connect the wires to the module. Okay, one more wire. Okay, not bad, not bad at all. So let's put our 12 volt battery in there. Okay, I've connected a LED to the board. So now if I move my arm, yes, it turns on, it works. And then after 40 seconds or so, it should go off on its own. Yes, that also works. And all we need to do now is drill a hole in the submarine of 12 millimeters. But I think it's best that we start with a small 3 millimeter drill. I'm just going to eyeball it. Wow! That actually looks like it's dead center. And while I'm at it, I'm also going to do the rest of the holes. And now we take a six millimeter drill. Uh oh. Whoopsie. Mm. And now it's time for the big 12 millimeter drill. Wow. 
Well, that's not uh, very nice. Mm, let me try if I can clean it up with a Dremel. Whew. I'm glad that worked. Now, in order to gain access to this compartment, I think it's best that I cut a hole right here on top of it. Oh, it's beginning to crack. And now we go fishing. Yes, there we go. Okay, and now I have to strip eight LEDs and that's just for one side. And then we twist all the positive and negative wires together. And then we solder some red wire to it. And then we solder some black wire to the negative. And then we put some heat shrink over that. And then we heat it up. And then we slide a bigger heat shrink over that. And then an even bigger heat shrink. And this will be the last one. I also want to put some lights in here, but that's a bit difficult since it's completely sealed off. Okay, let's start by drilling through the windows. We also need a hole on the bottom for the wires. So, I've already painted this piece, that will make it a bit more easy to work on. And now we are going to put in the eyes and they feel like real glass. And this comes with the kit. So now we are just going to press it in. It's a tight fit. And now the second one. They are in. And now we are going to fill it with two components glue. This will hold the eyes and the light in place. Oh wow, suddenly this gets a lot heavier. 
<clears throat> then we mix it up a bit. Whoopsie, I forgot the little eyes on top, so the glue was coming out. <laughs> okay, all the parts are degreased, and now we are going to put on the primer. And after some more sanding, we are going to degrease everything and then it's time to glue all the pieces together and I'm going to use this epoxy glue. Now this two component epoxy glue has to be mixed very well. After a few minutes it starts to get sticky and a bit milky and then you know it's time to put the pieces together. And after everything is primed, we are going to put some color on there. This is bronze. Uh, I had this laying around, but I think this is going to give a very cool effect on the rusty primer. And now we let everything dry overnight. All right. Everything dried overnight and now it's time to put on a matte clear coat uh, to make it less shiny and a bit darker and of course to protect the paint. And while the clear coat is drying we are going to paint these support beams. And I am going to use this polished brass color. Right now it looks a bit dark green, so you have to mix this very well. Yes, this is how it's supposed to look. Okay, the support beams are nice and goldish now. And now we are going to sand the edges and the bottom. And now we are going to glue the support beams to this wooden base. I got it from Amazon and I already marked where the support beams need to go and also sanded it. And now we are going to prepare our two components epoxy glue. Okay, let's mix it up. Okay, the glue is on there. And now we place the beam onto the wooden base. Alright, my base plate is ready. And this little plaque also came with the kit Nautilus 20,000 Louis sous la mer, which is French for Nautilus 20,000 leagues under the sea. Okay, this bracket is now painted brass or goldish, and now we are going to glue in this dome shaped glass window. And for that, I'm going to use this. Uh, power gel glue from Loctite. It's already sanded and degreased. Now this glue is just perfect uh, if you like to build models. You just press these two buttons here and then you can be very very precise uh, to put the glue on. And it's very strong and it will never break off because it's gel based. It's not like um, super glue which, which gets very hard and then breaks off. But you have to be uh, pretty fast uh, to put the glass window in. And this glue also doesn't make any white stains or it doesn't drip off. But it is pretty expensive and it looks like uh, a big bottle but there's only 
3 gram in there and it works on about everything uh, plastic metal wood glass as you can see the glass window is already secured in there then we mix up some more epoxy glue and put all the pieces together and next up I'm going to put some gel glue onto this um, white glass and glue them into this bracket and that will diffuse the light um, I'm not going to do it with epoxy glue because that just, that's just too thick and I'm not going to use super glue because then these little bulbs will just stick to my fingers here you can see the lights without the white glass in front of it and this is how the diffused light looks with the white glass in front of it looks a lot better doesn't it and here you can see the Nautilus in all its glory and if you move in front of it the lights turn on automatically and they turn off uh, in about 40 seconds or so it's an infrared sensor so yes it also works in the dark and that's very handy because now I have a night light and I won't bump the table anymore in the hallway something extra that I added was a little light behind this glass window and the reason why we don't have a glass window here is because uh, the light sensor doesn't work when there's a glass in front of it now I can still remove this middle piece uh, luckily for that because otherwise I couldn't do any repairs uh, or replace the battery um, it works on a 9 volt battery now because the 12 volt batteries were not powerful enough they were empty after like two minutes or so and that's because there's a lot of electronics and LEDs in there so yeah that's why I had to switch batteries um, and there's also an extra soundboard in there that will activate as soon as the lights turn on and then you will hear uh, the sound of Nemo playing on his organ Now I have a question for the viewers that are still watching uh, Should I put some weathering uh, or oxidation on it uh, with some paint or just leave it like that? And also let me know what you think of the build and if you like the color that I have chosen. <laughs> 